You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 41, all about study strategies. I'm going to tell you some of my top study strategies that I train students in, and most importantly for today, the strategy that I see many students and their parents sometimes using and sometimes relying on that actually isn't a strategy at all. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hey, VIPs, how are you? I hope you're doing awesome. I am doing awesome. The weather here is still just fantastic. It is totally perfect for me. That summer humidity has gone and the sun is just shining every day, or at least that's how it feels. (laughs) I'm pretty sure I know I talked about the weather in the last episode, but the novelty of having huge stretches of amazing weather as someone coming from England just doesn't wear off, (laughs) even after being here for more than 12 years now. And Talking about the weather is what a lot of English people do, a lot of. So that clearly has not worn off for me either. And also, I think on the last episode, I said about my back that I'd strain my back and that is gradually getting better. So I'm even planning on getting back to one of the functional training classes at my gym this Saturday and seeing how that goes. So fingers crossed for that. So I am just in a good mood in general right now. And today I want to talk about something that sounds super positive. When you say the word, it usually has a lot of good connotations, but actually, in my experience, when it comes to your teen and their study, at least, it is not a good thing. Or at least I should say it's a sign of something not good. Because I want to talk about hope, or more specifically, relying on hope and the way I see so many students and sometimes their parents as well, often relying on hoping that things will go how they want in terms of their study. So for students, they hope that they'll get the grade they really want on that assignment. They hope that a certain question will be the one that they get for that essay, the essay that they really want to write, that they feel confident in writing, or they hope that a certain topic won't come up on the exam. And for parents, you might sometimes hope that things like the senior years won't be too stressful for them. You hope that the exam goes well for them so they don't have to feel the disappointment or deflation if it doesn't. You hope that they get the ATAR or the grading or the point score to get them into the uni or the career or the course that they want. But hope is not a strategy. It's not an action that has a result. It has no tangible specific outcome. When we use hope, we rely on external circumstances or the actions or the decisions of others. What does the examiner decide to put on the paper, for example? What does the teacher decide is going to be the essay title? And this is why I never say good luck to students anymore. Well, really, I try not to say it to anyone anymore. And I talked about that in episode 29 on the podcast. So go find that if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about that. But a word I have found myself using more and more over the years of being in this world of training and coaching students on their study is the word strategy. You've likely heard me talk about strategic study or strategically planning or prioritizing, having a system or engineering something. These are things that have a proven method or steps and they are intentional because I believe that at least some of students' stress, especially when it comes to exams, comes from uncertainty. And if we can minimize that, then we can reduce some of their stress as well as maximize their success. So I want all students to have go-to proven strategies that they can rely on whenever they get given an essay, when they're sat in that exam hall, not phased by having 
no idea what that essay will be or what questions are going to come on that paper. And they have prioritizing and time management skills when they have a turn of assessments due or they need to plan their revision for a big exam block. I don't want them to be guessing or just doing their best and hoping. So when I was preparing and writing some notes for this podcast episode, I went and looked up the definition of the word strategy. And here is the first definition I found. It said, a strategy is a plan, method or series of maneuvers for obtaining a specific goal or result. And as you can imagine, I really liked that definition. But what I'd love even more was if it also said proven in there, a proven plan or a proven method or series of maneuvers. Because if your teen can have, and not just have, but also accurately action and execute a proven plan or method to tackle their study and assessments, that's going to increase the chances of them achieving their desired goal or result. And it's likely that they'll do it in the smoothest, most direct and least stressful way. But then I saw another definition below that. And on first glance, I didn't think it was relevant. I don't even know why I ended up reading it because it was in relation to battle strategy or military strategy. But for some reason, I still read it. And This was literally just in dictionary.com. So you could go see it for yourself if you want to. But here's what it said. It said, in a military usage, a distinction is made between strategy and tactics. Strategy is the utilization during both peace and war of all a nation's forces through large scale, long range planning and development to ensure security or victory. And then it says tactics deals with the use and deployment of troops in actual combat. Now, I'm not loving the focus here on war or fighting or combat, but here are the words that I do love. Strategy is the utilization during both peace and war. So your teen is using strategies for success, for victory, all of the time, not just when things are stressful or busy or high stakes or they have an exam. They are using them all of the time so that actually things don't get so stressful. They don't get totally busy or overwhelmed. They're actively setting themselves up for success and doing it with control and confidence. And then there's the part that says, with all of a nation's forces through large-scale long-range planning and development, which is like having that full toolkit of study strategies, all of the forces, the skills and techniques, and also developing them, advancing and honing and practicing them. Skills and techniques that apply to all different subjects and all types of tasks so that even when your teen is faced with a new topic or a new assessment task, even an unforeseen circumstance or situation, They have the concept, skills and tools to deal with it and not only deal with it, but as the definition said, ensure victory too. Ensuring victory. I like that part. So what are some of these strategies? Well, some of the proven strategies that I train students in in the 10-week grade transformation program are things like, and I will list a few out for you. The two-step topic and focus system for breaking down essay titles and building a structured and focused response. There's identifying the command word in any question. You have heard me talk about command words a lot, whether it is in a textbook or on an assignment task or in an exam question. And importantly, also knowing exactly how to respond to that command how to accurately interpret mark schemes and success criteria. So your team knows what the words discerning selection of evidence rather than appropriate selection of evidence really mean. So they know what is required in an answer or in a response and what isn't required in their answer. So they're not writing more than they need to. There's the reverse engineered revision planning system. So your team never runs out of time to cover everything they need to and uses the two-factor priority system to organize and focus on certain content when the time is tight. And 
look, there are many more. <laughs> I will stop there because A, you can literally go and see all of these listed out in the contents of the program on the summary page for the 10WGT. You can just go to www.greattransformation.com forward slash join. I literally have listed out there the 10 modules and what is in them. But also B, because you are probably thinking... <laughs> oh my goodness, how are they supposed to learn all of that on top of what they're already doing, what they're already having to learn in their subject knowledge and in their classes? And I totally get that. But the truth is, I've had hundreds of students do exactly that in 10 weeks because some strategies literally take five minutes, five seconds to grasp. Others do take practice. And of course, we do that practice together. But I often liken this whole process to learning to drive. At first, everything does take concentration, just like you have to really think about which lever you're using for the indicators, pressing down the clutch to change gears when you are learning to drive. But eventually, you become really skilled at it. It just becomes easy and automatic and natural. Now, is doing a reverse park into a smaller than you'd like spot on the side of the road still something you're going to have to concentrate on? For sure. Not every part of your team study is going to become totally easy when they have the strategies and skills and nor should it because it, that would just mean that they're not learning or progressing. But getting the car into that spot might take a bit of concentration. It might take a second go, but you know how to do it. But what we don't do is we don't just go get into a car and hope that we can figure out this driving thing. We don't just hope that we don't crash. <laughs> we don't just keep trying till we get it right. Could you imagine if that were the case? And yet that is what I see so many students doing in their study. They are writing out or worse, copying out or typing out tons of notes, hoping that the information is going to go in and stick in their brain. Now, some of it might. But if they use active revision, that's another strategy, active revision techniques, a lot more of it would go in and stay in and then flow easily from brain to paper in the exam hall. And it is proven to. If they give their essay their best shot with the scaffold or template that they've been given in school, but without truly knowing the difference between explaining that quote and analyzing that quote and they hand it in hoping that they have enough detail in the right places that is not a proven strategy I literally call this hand in and hope <laughs> hand in the exam paper or hand in the essay and hope that it's okay hope that you get the result that you want and sometimes I will say parents hope because they've told me this hope that their teen can maintain a life balance and doesn't end up super stressed maybe even hope that by using let's say a study planner and writing up all those deadlines so they don't get overwhelmed they hope that that will stop the overwhelm but they don't realize that the real reason that things get stressful for their teen is when they don't feel like they know what they're really doing or they don't know how they're actually going to get it all done. They've got all the deadlines. They know what's happening, what they need to do, but they don't know exactly how to get it all done. And the thing is, sometimes the work hard and then hand it in and hope works. Sometimes they will get a good mark. They will get the grade that they were hoping for. And for many students, this is enough to keep them going with this strategy. I don't even want to say strategy. <laughs> they, with this, they keep going with this game of hope. <laughs> and when it does work, that is great. But I want your team to know exactly why it worked, exactly what worked in their writing that time, what they wrote that got marks and why it got marks. And how they can apply that to another task or question in future so they continue that success. I remember having a student quite a while ago now in the 10WGT who told me he'd gotten an A in his engineering assignment. And that was, of course, awesome. But of course, I immediately followed that up with, do you know why you got it? What got you that A? And he had a couple of vague ideas, but he was guessing and he didn't really know. So we got to work on that. We got to work on figuring out exactly what it was in his writing so that he could confidently do that again and transfer those skills, those strategies, those ways of meeting the criteria so he could do it again in any type of task. Because we can hope that we'll get the outcome 
or the result that we want, whether that's literally a grade or percentage number result, or whether it's the experience or the outcome, like getting through the senior years without becoming totally burnt out or stressed or overwhelmed. But hope is not a reliable system. And as you probably know by now, I am a little bit of a control enthusiast. So I like to have control and reliability if I am putting in effort and time. And if we want control and reliability, we need to know and use specific strategies that have been proven to get those outcomes and apply them for ourselves. So for this episode, I'd really like to invite you to consider where is your teen or you relying on hope in their study? Where could they use some strategies to help them move towards their desired outcome, achieve victory with more clarity and certainty and control in the more peaceful times and in the war times, in inverted covers? Where are they playing the hand in and hope game. What are you hoping for, for your teen and their study life without feeling very sure on how to predictably make that happen? And if you and your teen would like to make that happen, would like to get some of my top strategies, then I am running a free parent and teen workshop style webinar on Thursday, the 30th of March. Now, if you're on my email list, you'll be getting an email invite with a very cool new one-click webinar registration link in there that I have just set up to make it easier than ever for you to get these strategies and information for free. So if you are listening to this and you're not on my email list, you can get on there by going to www.gradetransformation.com and signing up for that. And either way, mark your calendar now for 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, 30th of March. So that's 8 p.m. New South Wales and Victoria time, 5 p.m. over in WA and Singapore and 9 a.m. in the UK. So please check your time zone for wherever you are and also account for any daylight savings. And let's minimize the use of hope, the reliance on hope and get your teen some proven tactics and strategies and skills to get them where you would love them to be and where they want to be in their study. So I will see you back here on the podcast next week. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you then. Bye. If you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program and I'll see you there.